Hello, and welcome to Agrosa Physics. Today is day 32, where we're going to look at a mathematical approach to solving vector problems, what I like to call the Franken vector method. Now, in this course, I've constantly talked about how everything we've done before builds upon the previous um, sets of knowledge. So everything we're doing today relies on knowledge that we've had before. And you may ask, how does the graphical method really fit into that um, scheme? And I would have to say that the graphical method is almost an independent topic. It's something that we do because it's good to have different ways to solving problems, but it really doesn't build upon previous knowledge from this course. Sure, you've used rulers and protractors in other courses. You've had to know how to measure things in other science courses. But the reality is, it's not something that we use every day in the lecture section of the course in physics. It's something we may use in the laboratory section. But the reality is, it's not something that we're using every day in class. Ruler and protractor is something that almost feels like a supplemental topic. Now in this case, we're going to do a mathematical approach, and it's going to use um, skills that you've learned in other sections of the course, namely the projectile motion part. Now if you remember, we were dealing with projectile motion in the last chapter, and projectile motion utilized the fact that perpendicular vectors are independent. And what we're going to be able to do is use that same knowledge to solve vector problems. But just like projectiles, sometimes we have problems where the vectors are at random angles. They could be at a 30 degree angle. They can be at a 72 degree angle. It could be in quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, or even quadrant 4. And what we're going to have to do now is force the vectors to be perpendicular yet again. We're going to have to break legs. Now if we want to be fancy, we call that resolving the vector into components. But casually, we call it breaking legs because we need the vectors to be perpendicular in order to work with them. Now the mathematical vector approach uses that fact. And what we're going to do is take all of our vectors and we're going to force them to be perpendicular. We're going to take a vector that's at an angle and make it into an x and a y component if it's in the x and y axis the mathematical axis, or we're going to make it go north, south, east, or west if it's in the regular compass rows. So we have a procedure for doing so. And really, it's something that you already know how to do. We're just going to put the pieces together. We're literally going to put the pieces together. All those legs are going to be put back together to form what I like to call Franken vector. Now, the first thing you're going to do is list all your vectors. Any vector that's already along an axis, you know the legs of that vector. One of them's hidden, of course, and that's the vector that points in the axis that it's not pointing along. For example, if I have a vector that's 70 meters east, well, my east vector is 70 meters. But my north-south vector, the hidden variable in this case, is going to be 0. If I have a vector that's at an angle, I'm going to need to find the legs of that right triangle. So I'm going to have to use sine and cosine. Now, remember, in projectile motion, all of the angles were measured with respect to the horizontal axis. And that allowed us to always use cosine for x and sine for y. So what I like to do is I like to take any vector and remeasure it with respect to the x-axis. Sometimes I might have a vector that points along the vertical axis. For example, if I go east of north 20 degrees, the 20 degrees touches the northern part of the axis. That's not horizontal. So what I'm going to do when I draw it out is I'm going to use the complement of that when I'm drawing it. Instead of writing 20 degrees east of north, I'm going to write it out as 70 degrees north of east. The 70 is the complement of 20, and that will allow me to always use cosine for x and sine for y. That being said, I'm going to have legs of every vector that I have. If a leg points to the right, it's positive. If a leg points up, it's positive. If a leg points to the left or down, they're going to have negative values. So what I'm going to do is list those values, keep all the x's together, keep all the y's together. And the way I've found that that's easiest by using a chart to keep my data organized. Organization is one of the most important things in physics. That's why we do a givens list. We organize our givens so that it's easier to find an equation to use. 
So what we're going to do is take our vector legs and put them in a chart. Once we have the chart, we kind of feel remorseful about breaking legs so much, so we put them all back together. And that's when we form Franken vector. Franken vector is the vector that points in the x and y direction made up of all the body parts we had already, all the legs of the vectors. So Franken vector has two pieces, an x and a y. Well, we feel so bad about the breaking legs, we put together the x and y's, we might as well put back the full vector. So the way we're going to do that is by using the Pythagorean theorem. We put the x and y together after we sketch it. Now the reason that's important is because if we just sketch it with x and y with a positive number, we're going to always have vectors, answers, or resultants pointing in the first quadrant, and not all answers point in quadrant one. So what you're going to need to do is draw your vectors out again. Sketch the x in the proper direction, sketch the y in the proper direction using the tip to tail method, and then draw your resultant from the beginning to the end. It doesn't have to be drawn, it can be sketched. You don't have to draw it to scale. Instead, you just sketch it out. And that's just to get the proper direction. Now once you're done with that, all you're going to do is use the Pythagorean theorem to get the resultant, and then use inverse tangent to get the direction. If you're in the XY coordinate system, you have to adjust that to fit in the right quadrant. If you're in the north, south, east, west uh, coordinate system, you're going to do north of east, east of south, west of north, whatever is appropriate for the vectors that you added. So you're going to have a blank of blank. Now, I have a procedure that allows us to do the vector addition properly. Um, it is something that you'll do, um, you'll follow closely for the first few trials, but after you do a few vector problems, you'll find that um, it becomes second nature. You don't need to look at the vectors um, every time. Now the key is that you need to force the vectors to be perpendicular in order to use them. So that's why we break legs in the first place. But your answer can't be a bunch of legs, so you're going to put them back together. We take Franken vector and we, re, we reanimate him by using the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem is the um, lightning, if you will, that reanimates our vector. All the body parts get reanimated and form Franken vector. It seems like a complex thing when I'm talking about it verbally, but I think a sample problem will help solidify it in your mind and help you understand the steps needed to solve vector problems mathematically. You can solve vector problems that have any number of vectors in it as long as you follow the steps for each individual vector. Sketch it out, find the x and y components, put them in a chart, add the x's together, add the y's together, sketch out the resultants in the x and the y, what I call Franken vector, and then reanimate Franken vector using the Pythagorean theorem and inverse tangent. It's a mouthful, and it's a lot to write down as a procedure, but you'll see that it takes um, a little bit of time to get the hang of it, but once you do a few practice problems, it will become second nature to you. Now the mathematical method, we could take our protractor and our ruler and eliminate them. We don't need them because with the mathematical vector method, we're going to use our calculator exclusively. And when we draw vectors, we're going to use sketches. So we're going to sketch them, which is just estimated. They don't even have to be even remotely close to the right angle um, or the length even. You can draw them and they're not to scale. So anytime you sketch something, it's not going to be to scale necessarily. You could draw it, and that's a, the other key, which is what we did before. That's when you use precision, where the angles matter, where the lengths matter, and the answer is just measured. Um, when you sketch things, which is what we're going to do mathematically, you're just kind of uh, figuring out directions. Now, if we look at V1 and V2, we don't need a scale. No scale needed. So we don't have to do one centimeter equals five miles or anything like that. All we're going to do is set up a chart. Now, when we have vectors that are perpendicular already, 
I think the easiest way to do it is just draw the two vectors. You still sketch them tip to tail, 75 and 50. I'm going to label V1 and V2. And what I'll do is also label the result. And the result still starts at the origin. So we still use the tip to tail method, but we don't draw them to scale. This is 75, and this is 50. And what we need to do is get this angle touching the dot, and we need to get the length of the result. So we use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this case, it would be v1 squared plus v2 squared equals r squared. And that is just using the um, variables that we have in this triangle. So 75 miles squared plus 50 miles squared equals r squared. So 75 squared plus 50 squared equals 8,000 and change. I'll take the square root and I have 90.14 miles. To get the angle, I'm going to use tangent theta equals opposite, which is 50 miles, over adjacent, which is 75 miles. So 50 divided by 75, the units cancel. I have 0.667, second tan, inverse tan of the answer, second answer. And I have 33.7 degrees. Putting them together, that's why I have the sketch. I need to know if it's north, south, east, west, and what direction we have. Since I started in the south and I went to the west, we're going to say west of south. So my final resultant is 90.14 miles at 33.7 degrees west of south. Now we can compare that to what we got before um, graphically and they should be close. It is possible that we did the complement of the 33.7, um, in which case it would be 90 minus 33.7, and that would get us 56.3 degrees, but that would have been the other direction, and it would be south of west, and both directions would be equivalent.